Till Terah, the father of Abraham, everybody gave birth between the ages of 28 and 37. Everybody in that lineage. When it got to Terah, Terah gave birth to Abraham at 75. Uh -uh. And you know that Abraham gave birth to Isaac at 100. So I want to ask you a question. What's your definition of barrenness? Follow, follow me. Just because you see, there are encounters that change your definitions. It makes that you are not troubled about what other people are troubled about because you know the one who brought you there. It is at that point that faith becomes faith because faith is personal. Look at this. It was obvious that the moment God got to terror and he wanted to start that lineage of faith, obviously God wanted to start with terror. Don't forget it was the closed eye we are coming from. So, obviously God wanted to start with terror because the Bible told you that terror set out to go to Canaan. Which was the land that God afterwards promised Abraham. And the problem we have here is that Terah obviously knew where he was going. And he was obviously driven by God because he was now in the lineage of Shem where the promise was resting. Look at this. And then Abraham travels and arrives at all of the Chaldeans. Sorry, Terah travels and arrives at all of the Chaldeans. That's Abraham's father. The Bible says he settled there. Why? Obviously, there was nothing he was looking for in Canaan that was not here. So there's no need traveling from here because what I think God is taking me to go and see in Canaan, I have it here. And obviously, the moment he decided to settle, God looked beyond him to the next generation. But when God came to the next generation, that's my second example now. When God came to the next generation, look at this carefully. Look at this. He didn't say to Abraham, get up and complete Terah's journey. I hope you know that the problem of religion is our fathers worship God in this mountain. You see, I can say these things and run away. PDC, here, he will continue. Do you understand it? Yeah. He, will, he will continue from there. Look at this. God didn't say continue Terah's journey. Neither did God say, come, let me take you to Canaan. God said, follow me. You will soon get it. Baby, can you hold it by yourself? God says, follow me. He says, when we get where I'm taking you to, I will show you. Then Abraham, 75. Starts the journey. And then God says to him, I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you. Make your name great. You'll be a blessing. By you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Automatically means you have plenty of children. Abraham. By the time Abraham arrived at 86, him and Sarah had a meeting. And they told themselves, this promise of God requires our help to fulfill it. And one of the things you must be careful about, especially after you have begun a walk with God, is the need to help God fulfill his promise. Follow this. It's a part of the brotherhood I'm talking about. But follow this until you get this that becomes difficult to understand. Now, they make that mistake. Continue the journey. Let's cut this short. He arrives at Canaan and God says to him, Ta-da! Here's the land. Abraham looks around and says, No, Lord, this cannot be the land. Follow me. God says, Ta-da! Behold the land. Abraham said, because of everything I've encountered with you from here to here, I know that you cannot give me a physical land. Yay. You must be giving me a city that has two foundations that you made and formed by your hands. Yeah. 
You cannot take me from my father's house to give me a land that looks like my father's house. God said, you've got it. Because at that point, Abraham permitted his experience and encounter to redefine. That's what Abraham had that obviously Terah lacked. So while, while Terah was looking for a physical inheritance, do you now wonder why Abraham, a king with four nations, came against a king with five nations, won the king with five nations, collected his land, then made the mistake of adding Abraham's nephew to the things he collected in Sodom. That's a singular mistake. Now, if you know ancient war, you will know that by the time he has conquered that nation, he now is in charge of nine nations. So Abraham meets a king who could call the army of nine nations and wars against that king with 350 something servants. And he wins the war against that king but did not decide to become lord over 10 kingdoms he collected what he came to collect his nephew and he went back oh it sounds foolish in your hearing except that Abraham was still under the hand of God and he was waiting to see what God wanted to reveal and so if God did not reveal 10 nations Abraham would not collect 10 nations all Abraham went for was give me my nephew, Lord. Then the king of Sodom that was conquered now came to Abraham. I said, give me back the men. You can take the goods. Hey. Abraham looked at him. I said, who gave you right now to talk? Because it's the king that conquered you that I just conquered. <laughs> so there's actually no basis for negotiation. You can't stand in front of me as the king of Sodom. Rightfully, I should be the king of Sodom now. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But it was obvious that everybody saw that Abraham was not interested in anything apart from Lot. So the king of Sodom came back alive and stood in front of Abraham and said, give me everything you, just give me the men, take everything. Abraham looked at him and he said, I have lifted up my hands to God the possessor of heaven and earth. Hey, I wish you heard the title he called God. Yeah. The possessor of heaven. That means all this thing you think you have. No, you are only holding it for a little while. When the true owner shows up. Yes, oh, which song was Gay singing this morning? When he said, at the end, every knee will bow. Yeah. Look, see, look, church, leave this United Kingdom team. Every knee will bow. Leave all of the lies that are flying in legislations. Every knee will bow. All it will take is the appearing of the Son of Man. That's all. But before he appears, we will collect those kingdoms and be waiting for him. Aye. Hear this. So that I can release this innocent daughter God to sit down. Saints, Abraham looked and he said, there's nothing you can give me. If God does not give it to me, I don't want it. So I've lifted up my hand to God, the possessor of heaven and earth, and I've sworn that I will not take as little as a shoelace from you so that you don't wake up tomorrow and say, I made Abraham rich. Hey. Hey. I hope you noticed that it was immediately after that encounter that Melchizedek came. Yes. Yes. So Melchizedek did not just come. A declaration provoked him. Yes. Because when Melchizedek came, the blessing he put on Abraham is, blessed are you Abraham of the most high God, possessor of the heavens and the earth. That means by the declaration you made in front of the king of Sodom, everything earthly can no longer contain you. So I brought you a blessing from your true city. A man can live on earth and live in heaven. So God looked at him. Do, do you know what it means? I ask people, when Jacob held, I, thank you dear, please sit down. I need a brother this time. 
Uh -huh, come, come. You already come. Wait, let me ask you a question very quickly. Look at this. Because you now have to understand the brotherhood. When they said Jacob and the angel fought, what were you thinking? You were thinking that they were. <laughs> now, if the angel wrestled with Jacob like that, in the morning, what you will find is grounded powder. <laughs> Ask me, pastor, how do you know? I'll tell you. When the angel was leaving, he did like this. And Jacob, <laughs> if the person that did like this and you lost your hip bone, lost joint, wrestles with you all night. <laughs> what do you think you look like? Oh, my God. oh, let me provoke you to seek the blessing of heaven. This time is not my friend. Look at this. So Jacob wrestles all night. Let me tell you what the wrestling is. God showed up. Every time he tried to go away, Jacob held him back. Because obviously God did not do anything in the direction of Jacob. Because like this, this hand will have split into two. <laughs> obviously, the wrestle was... That was what he said. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now my question here is what is the blessing? Because Jacob had come out having swept clean. He had swept clean the entire house of Laban. He had come as a mighty caravan. He went as a single man, came back as a nation. Fool! So if Jacob was asking for the blessing at this point, do you think he was asking for anything material? What Jacob wanted was what God told Joshua in Zechariah chapter 3. That you can be blessed on earth and still walk the courts of heaven. So Jacob wanted the right, like Abraham, to also have his name in the courts of heaven. Thank you. So listen to me. Back to First John. And I start to wrap this up. So John said, everything we encountered in Christ, right? That which was from the beginning. The word, the highest wisdom by which everything was made. Everything we encountered in him. John summarized in two words, eternal life. In verse 2. And he said that that life, please put verse 2 for me, the life was manifested and we have seen and we bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Naturally speaking, you would believe that John was talking about the manifestation of Jesus whom they lived with. Come on, somebody say an amen, right? Okay, you didn't get it. If you didn't say that amen, then it means you didn't get it. Naturally speaking, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we have seen with our eyes and handled. Naturally, when you read that, you know that John was talking about the fact that we lived with Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And because we lived with Jesus, he was manifested, we saw him, then he used the words we bear witness. Because witnessing is not talking about. Witnessing is becoming like. So tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. And you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be. So excuse me, what story came from heaven that they waited for in Jerusalem? None. They could have as well gone to start telling people all the things that happened when they were with Jesus and inviting people into the kingdom of God. But what God was saying to them is that witnessing me is beyond telling the stories of what you saw. Witnessing me will require how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with and, and you shall receive power after that the 
So the same elements that made Jesus, Jesus, were the elements he asked them to wait for. Because he didn't want them talking about Jesus. He wanted them being Jesus. So to witness is not to talk about. To witness is to become. So, take it back to 1 John and let's read that word witness again and you'll see something. Where I'm going to is one verse. I get there, we close. Now, look at this. Mm. Good. The life was manifested. We have seen that life and we have become. And by becoming, we now declare unto that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Verse 3, quickly. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. Now, please stop. That means if it does not become real to us, we cannot invite you. Can I tell you the evangelical problem the church is having? We are talking about a God who is not real to us. Mm. I told you about faith earlier. His reality to you is revealed in the state of your heart when especially you are in dark circumstances. So we, are, we cannot convince the people who we are telling Jesus is alive because there's nothing about our lives that show that Jesus is alive. Why? Let me tell you the list of your witness. The list of your witness is that you should never lose your joy. Are you following me? Why are you so downcast, oh my soul? Hope in God. That means that to carry a downcast countenance is to declare, I'm hopeless. So an unbelieving office mate walks in and he sees your countenance. He knows you're having a bad day like he sometimes has a bad day. And the real problem is not the circumstances around you. The real problem is that you don't know the one who said, peace I live with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, give I thee. That means a believer, listen, the highest right of a believer in every circumstance is peace. Yes. There is no circumstance you are in that God permits your peace to go away. He can permit your money. He can permit anything to happen around you. But be answers for nothing in everything by prayer and supplication. Make your request known to God and the peace of God. That means that even if God is not answering your request, peace. Peace. I said that's the list of your witness. Paul said to the Philippian church, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I said, that means there should be no time we should catch a believer without his rejoicing. Listen, I believe that as the envoy nation begins a fast today, God is in inviting us into witnessing. Amen. Let me tell you, I sat down there and I rejoiced greatly that finally I can find one place in the United Kingdom where people can fast and pray three times in a day. I wish you heard me. And I'm praying that we will not come here and PD and PMO We'll have three other people to pray with. Are you following me? Because you see, I, oh, I was speaking with some believers yesterday in London, and I said to them in that meeting, the faith that works in Nigeria has to work in the UK. I wish you heard me. That means, if I can believe that God will make me debt free in Nigeria, that God will open useless doors of supply, you know what I'm, I call useless, stupendous doors, or supply. <laughs> Sir, let me tell you something. The UK is not like Nigeria. Nobody dashes anybody money here. <laughs> Listen, the principle that makes people dash people money is not African. It's scriptural. Yes, oh, I wish you heard me. That means I can compel the favor of kings. If ravens said Elijah, ravens can feed me here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. 
The real problem is the courage to stand where God asks you to stand. And not let the storm called the United Kingdom system make you begin to sink on these waters. I believe that there's a witness God is calling out of us. Please give me verse 4. And that's my verse of emphasis today. And we pray. First John 1, 4. Look at this. He said, no, 3, sorry. 3 again. 3 again. 3 and 4. That the things we've seen and heard, the things we've revealed to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And when you fellowship with us, you are fellowshipping with God and with Jesus. Pastor Chin talks paraphrase. Go back. Go back to verse 3. What I was saying is that God has ordained that within the context of now, if you meet us who met life, and listen to this, every believer has the right to meet life. So this is not just the apostles. But when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. He gave those foundational apostles as the revelation of the things that he has done so that everybody can take Jesus from the apostles. Then the rest of the nations can take Jesus from those who met the apostles. That means there's a technology in God that makes efficacious. Please hear me very carefully. Makes that the efficacy of what you meet duplicates itself exactly in you if you commit to the process. So if there's less revelation of Jesus in any generation, what it actually means is that there are less people who are committed to the process of becoming like him. Capish. The efficacy of what should live in you should not be less than what lived in Jesus. The difference is the commitment to the process. So hear this. Come back by 6 p.m. with fruits. We are fasting. Let us break together. And what you are thinking is we are come to come and eat in church. That's how we, know. we just pray. Then we not come and eat. In. No, what you did not know was that they were giving you an opportunity to partake of life. Because when you partake on the same table with people who have contacted life, they can distribute the life they have found. John said, when you fellowship with us, you are fellowshipping with the Father and with Jesus. So let me ask you, next Sunday when you dress up in the morning, where are you going to, to worship? No, you are not just going to the envoy nation. You are going to meet the Father and Jesus. Because if PMO gets up here and she shares a scripture for five minutes, she's not just telling you stories. She's releasing a dimension of life she has found. I didn't spend the last one hour on this pulpit to tell you beautiful stories. I came to release dimensions of life I have found. One day I looked at my congregation and I said to them, I said, this one, till today my children tease me with it. I mean my biological children. I told them, I said, faith is something God gave me. I have it. Take it. People got up from there and the kind of things they did are inhuman. Why was I able to say that? I saw Peter and John at the beautiful gate speak with such audacity. Such as I have. Such as we have. Hello, saint. What inheritance do you have in God that you can look at another person now and say, such as I have? Because there are two dimensions to this message. It's a provocation to become like Christ. But it's also a generation of confidence in that which you know God has deposited in you. Listen. And this is how I close this message. So that we can pray. That means when I pursue God, I pursue God for me but I pursue God for us. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Look at this. That the endless vastness of God is captured in its multifaceted dimension by the fact that, listen, God has a special love code in his relationship with every one of us. So when you walk in, you are likely going to be seeing God according to the love code he operates with you. 
And it's obvious to me that God enjoys it like that. That's why no matter what you do, people like gays cannot wear suit. The day I find gays in suit, I'll know that Jesus is coming next week. And yet, but for the religious nomenclatures and structures in our minds, you can draw the same amount of life. Did you see how many times I quoted his songs this morning? Yes, yes. It tells you that everybody could have been dancing, but I was hearing. Yes. I was hearing the word of the Lord. Yes. That revelation he said about David, I never observed it. I never observed it. I know the entire story. I never observed it. I never observed that everything started to fall apart after David's encounter with Bethlehem. Never observed it. Tomorrow when I preach it on another pulpit, somebody will give me offering for it. Because I will not even reference him. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> One of my friends said that you have the right to reference twice. That if I reference you in a place once, and I reference you twice, by the third time, it's my revelation. <laughs> That's a joke, you know. Are you following me? Yes, I'm saying to you that you can stand in a place. And I, I told the Lord, I said, I want to know you to the degree to which if a person closes a door and you are speaking in the closing of that door, I will hear it. And I started to see. A child will get up and run past and the word of the Lord will come to me. Then I realized that there were prophets in the Old Testament who were designed like that. An event happens. The moment the event happens, they're able to see what the Lord is saying. And look at this. And this is the statement I'm justifying before we close. That means every time I see God, I see God for me, but I see God for us. Because the unique revelation of God that I find, he might never give to you because you have me. So God forces us to humility one to another. Listen, when the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5, submit yourselves one to another, he wasn't talking about marriage. Because if you go on to Ephesians chapter 6, you will see submission between parents and children. You see submission between masters and servants. You will see, and in each of those submissions, he seems to subject the one to the other. So wife, subject yourself to your husband. Husband, subject yourself to your wife. That's what he said. Yes. Children, subject yourselves before your parents. Parents, subject yourselves. That's what he meant by do not provoke your children to anger. That means you now know that I don't have the right to say or do just whatever I feel. Masters, treat your servants like fellow heirs. Then he says servants. Serve your masters like you are serving Christ. That means you'll be a fool. If your master starts to treat you like fellow heir, then you start to behave like fellow heir. <laughs> so notice that submission demands I pay assistants to work for me, but every time they walk for or around me, I tell them thank you. Yes. Because we are not the world. They are far beyond what I pay them. And I'm not just talking about the value of what they do. I understand that they are ministering to a vision God has given to me. If anything happens to them today, I stand up and take it upon myself. The reason is simple. That there's a dimension of Christ. Listen, PD is an academic. So I'm sure he writes his books. I don't write my books. I preach my books. They transcribe it. Now, they sent me an introduction to my next book three days ago, The Man Jesus. And in that book, what I did was I revealed the humanity of Jesus as the pathway to ascending into the divinity of Jesus. Because many people miss the divinity of Jesus because they don't see the humanity of Jesus. The humanity of Jesus was the ladder for you to know that even though you can be hungry, you can also be divine. That the presence of your human temperaments does not stop the manifestation of the divine from you or through you. She transcribed the introduction I gave. 
and sent it back to me. I told her, I said, who said this? She says, sir, it's what you said. I said, it's not what I said. Why? Because she engaged the dimension of Christ that she has found. That's the reason why there are certain things that you don't just give to professionals. You must give it to anointed professionals. I wish you heard me. You must give it to anointed professionals. People who are able to, like Bezalel, hear the things that you said God revealed to you and bring out the picture and you don't have to correct it. I wish you heard me. If I've not learned submission to that gift and I offend that gift and that gift walks away from me, I can stop writing books for maybe another 10, 15 years until God decides to have mercy upon me. What you won't know is that I just didn't fellowship with a brother who should have revealed that dimension of Christ Saints, the next time you shake a brother in church, shake them with the consciousness that there's a dimension of Christ I need that you carry. And in fellowshipping with you, I am sitting around both wisdoms and energies. I wish you heard me. Both wisdoms, because there are dimensions that are given by wisdom, there are dimensions given by service, but there are certain people whose ambience you sit around. And the shadow of the anointing is strong enough to change something inside of you without them saying a word. You can sit next to a person and walk out knowing that you just collected temperance. You are suddenly realizing that you are not being angry, but the problem with everything spiritual is that it is received by a consciousness. That way, you won't quickly throw out a brother. You will not quickly throw out a sister. You will not quickly throw out a neighbor. No. Where you sit, hold somebody by the hand and let's pray in the spirit for two minutes. Let's see how much power is generated in this place. And while you pray there, somebody with the healing anointing is releasing healing in the atmosphere. Today as a disclaimer, I'm saying to you that the healing that is coming to you is not necessarily coming from this pulpit. It's coming from that which every joint supplies. While you pray right now, set up a consciousness of both releasing and receiving. Rakabalo apati gesta ali abasha kande gebataya rekamba di abakaso aile basana. Come on, we don't have too much time to pray, so make it effectual. Engage your heart in it. Release and receive. If there's a need in your life, lift it up now as you pray, and become conscious that there's somebody. Who is sitting in this congregation? Who has the anointing to generate wealth? And that brokenness you are suffering can end not because he gave you money, but because he released grace. Nedo supre gilia taka zabaile ke mane anka baro ke siaye ezande ke balakori andatai rada bakosu ke bekelia kamana magadobai na baile bekori asemba sakaya rekamba la pando ke bezia taya partake us one of another partake us one of another partake us one of another erandi ke bakandia balataya and as Zion sharpen Zion Proverbs twenty seven so does a man sharpen Upon the countenance of his friend, ne kabaradia bakondia kebasai, ze kabalia bakandia pa, re gabatia bakonze ilia. Every infirmity 
healed. Every need met. Every weakness strengthened. Every lack of understanding receiving wisdom. Every confusion finding clarity. The pathway before you is opened right now. Partake us one of another. and that's how we come to the table every time we understand that as Christ is one body so are we one body and the things you are partaking of in Christ you can pass on to me just like the things I have partaken of in Christ I can open up the doorways for your experience Rakamba to beke kia bataya, rase prekule bikinai elakando kebe kaso kebe liasa, iranda kabako bali abakanda bakadosi, zekile barande kebe kandi abakosa, izandi akabarosi bekendi abakanai, rekaba tote be la asosea. Now release into the atmosphere freely. Just release. Forget about your own need and declare, such as I have, I give. Because I'm a partaker of the envoy nation this morning. I'm a partaker of the envoy nation by my commitment. I release of the grace that the Lord Jesus has given to me. Right now, I hear the Spirit of God say that some of you have always considered yourself insignificant. Confidence and courage is rising inside of you. You also have something you can release. So be strengthened with might by the Holy Ghost in your inner man. And release. Release. I have seen the wisdom of God operating me. Now I release it. I have seen the power of God operating me. Now I release it. I have seen God favor me easily. Now I release it. Someone who is at a hard crossroad receives favor because I release it. Oh, I have grace for understanding. So now I release it. I release it. I release it. Kambaro Paria Kaso Sekedishta. Now let's lift up our hands to the one who sends grace. We praise you, our God, from whom all blessings flow. From whom all blessings flow. From whom all blessings flow. We praise you, our God. From you all blessings flow. Praise you forevermore. Just lift up your hands in adoration of him. We praise you our God. From you all blessings flow. From you all blessings flow. From you all blessings flow. We praise you, our God. From you, our blessings flow. We praise you forevermore. Father, right now we agree that this house is full of grace. That the multidimensional, multifaceted wisdom of God and the stature of the fullness of your love is released in this atmosphere and on the strength of it we declare every need met every infirmity healed every brokenness restored thank you for direction thank you for clarity and i declare by the spirit of god that you walk into ease like you have never known before and that in that operation of ease you will remember that you are a partaker of your brethren Oh, that you will even arrive at acknowledging that this is that I find. I have seen this dimension at work here. I declare that your portion now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
and of the increase of his government and his peace there shall be no end i decree that everything you partake of today in multiplied dimensions you will go higher and higher and higher and higher in the name of jesus and no man will take from you the things you have found in god today but thank you for the envoy nation thank you for the release of your grace here thank you for brotherhood strengthened here thank you for submission one to another and the release of your matchless grace we give you praise and glory in jesus name and the church said